that's too bright. Can you see me? <laughs> oh, it is 7.30 on Sunday morning, and I thought I would give you a little glimpse into our Sundays. I already have one kid that's kind of awake. I don't know why she's asleep on the couch, but she's already like, I don't wanna go to church. <laughs> So I did straighten my hair last night, but I still need to kind of go and get these last little kinks out of it from sleeping on it. And I need to go up and get ready, but I had to get the camera. So <laughs> I'm going to just bring you along for the day. And it's a little bit of a different day because I've got to go run an errand with Jason, which we normally don't do on Sundays. But we'll explain that one later in a different video. I'm going to go upstairs and get ready. I'm always the first one to get out why that light's on because it takes me longer to get ready. Let's go get ready real quick. Mostly ready with my face and this is the point in my day where I stop being quiet and I need to wake him up <laughs> this is exactly what happens I usually turn on a video at this point get him out of bed <laughs> and he needs to get ready and then we need to get our grumpy kids up so that's the next step I'm going to buy well, I need to spray first and then do some mascara and then straighten my hair just a little bit and then I'll be ready and I can go help get some other snacks and stuff for church. Babe, uh, get up. up. I did too. And if he comes up with excuses, it's even more difficult for the children to go because he as adults need to be the exact. <laughs> So, um, 9 a.m. church for us is hitting hard. We're only, what, February 13th? <laughs> we change um, church times every year. We rotate between um, three different times for the three different groups, congregations that go to the church at our same building in order to make it fair, right? So no one wants the 9 a.m. time. Everyone wants the 11 o'clock time and the one, one o'clock time is not bad. That's what we had last year, but it's not greatest because then your day is gone, especially through the winter because it's dark by the time you come home or within like a half hour. So you just take your turn with the nine o'clock, but after two years of our, nine, or our 11 o'clock time and our one o'clock time, we're during the pandemic. And so we didn't get to take advantage of those times. <laughs> So then we're going to church in person really for the first time in for the nine o'clock time and it hits hard. So we don't normally have to wake our kids up for school even, but nine o'clock on Sunday seems a lot harder. So anyway, I'm going to so start for the day of rest. The rest of the day is the day of rest. Also, you won't see us doing much for the Super Bowl today because we don't really care. We wanted our Seahawks to play and they didn't. So we'll just do other things today. So. And my, my battery is flashing, so we'll see you when I'm mostly ready and try and get the kids up. You go get the kids up. No, you get the kids no, up. No, I always get the kids up. <laughs> you already went in the other room. He's purposely taking a long time so that he doesn't have to be the one to wake them up. I know him. I know him. I need to get a pill really quick. Hang on one second. Gotta get up, kiddo. I know. Blocking the sun. <laughs> Gotta get up. Come and eat. Okay? Come on, boo. Time for church. Okay? She's all snuggled in her mermaid. Gotta get up. Okay, let's talk religion. The awkward topic. <laughs> The reason why we really don't talk about our religion or whatever and even film on Sundays is more just because it's something that we protect versus something that we're hiding, you know? I don't want people to attack it, but I also don't want people to assume that if we talk about religion, we're trying to convert you. Not the case at all, and it's not the case with an intent with doing this video today. I just want you to understand, and some of you have asked, it, recently and in the past um we are mormons although they don't like us to use that terminology anymore they want to go by our original name of the church which is the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints so clearly if we have the name jesus christ in our name <laughs> then we are christian um some people don't think we are and that's fine they can have that but we are but more than anything, I think the world 
focuses more on our rules than on what our actual beliefs are or worries about what our actual beliefs are. So let's go over some of those basic rules that people get caught up on and worried about and they're really not that big a deal, at least not in my book. We'll kind of capture okay, this, this one. All right. Trying to wake up a little bit here. All right, so this is very informal, very, not unofficial, but like I'm not gonna dive into some theological discussion about this. I just want you to have basic information so that if I ever say something like, oh, we can't have wine, that's, this is why. So we don't drink alcohol, don't drink wine, beer, we don't drink. Um, it's not a temptation for us to even try to resist it. It never has been for me, and it certainly hasn't been for Jason. He grew up with friends of his in high school having parties, and he was the only sober one there. <laughs> so it's not really a temptation for us to not drink. Even when we went to Italy on our honeymoon, they, we had a waiter two different nights at this restaurant in Florence who was very mad at us for not drinking. And he's like, oh, Sprite. <laughs> You're having Sprite. Come to Italy and get Sprite. <laughs> it doesn't bother us because we just don't drink. So there's a rule. Also a rule of modesty um, without, this one's more of a sacred thing in terms of why. Um, it's just to keep us covered up. I obviously don't wear longer than short or sh shorter than short sleeves unless I'm at the beach or in the pool and wearing a swimsuit and a tank top and that kind of thing, especially when I'm on vacation and during the summer. Obviously when you work out, you can wear tank tops and, and short sleeves or whatnot. But it is a modesty issue. Let's try to show off the cute little hula girl tattoos. <laughs> yes. If you don't know that video, you need to go and watch our Hawaii vlogs. I'll link them above and you can go find out where he had hula girls on his chest. So I keep things modest. I obviously don't show my cleavage here and I wear clothing. That's <laughs> He sees plenty, he's fine. And then my shorts go down to my knee, the top of my knee, and it's not that big a deal. It's actually more comfortable to do so. And there are certain clothing items that we wear that we don't discuss that make it so that we stay within those restrictions and stay modest. So there's another rule, again, not that big a deal. Like if I wanna wear a tank top and a sports bra and go for a walk, I can. No one's saying that I can't. It's just something to keep us. You just get judged. Jason's not helping. Hurry and get ready, dude. I'm not eating this morning. That's why I'm just sitting here. I just do my intermittent fasting, and so I don't need to eat until we get home from church. Let's see, what's another rule, Jace, that everyone kind of gets caught up on? We're talking real ones or just cultural <laughs> pretend ones? That's, the, that's part of the problem, is that there are cultural things that have happened. So so Utah cultural. Prior, prior to, prior to uh, I guess, the 80s, you could, you know, it was, people wore any color shirt and stuff like that, but then they got uptight about white shirts because uh, the hippies and the, the, you know, older leadership wanted to like, you know, keep these hippies under control in the 60s and 70s, so they started doing the 1950s dress code. I personally, you gotta hold it. I, I, okay, whatever, I'll sit here. <laughs> I personally, uh, only reason I wear a white shirt is because I've lost my style. And so you just uh, wanna think about it. Well, it was cute because when uh, the girls were younger, they wanted to pick my tie. And I love that. And I used to have pinstripes and colors and stuff. It was hard for everyone to match. And it was hard to match. So I was like, you know what? It's more important that my girls want to do things with me. So I started wearing a white shirt. A few years of that, now I can no longer match and do patterns and I don't have any style. Yeah. So I stick with the boring white shirt. But yeah. that's not a commandment. It's not anything. It's just boring culture. Yeah. So some things, you know, are cultural. Some things are technically not supposed to have caffeine. Caffeinated drinks. Coffee is number one in that category it's called the word of wisdom if you want to look it up i obviously drink caffeine i drink coke so what's the difference between caffeinated coke and caffeinated coffee to each their own you have to like it's your own desires i guess i don't know it's it's a hard one you know uh let's see what else yeah it's not caffeine specific specific it's more the addicting factor to the caffeine which I have had a major addiction to it in the past. I'm like obviously like a lot better now. And I think part of that was because I was a lot more tired when the kids were little. And so I needed to have that caffeine. But it's a lot better now. Can you go get dressed? You gotta keep everyone on, on track here. So another one that we kind of talk about and part of the reason why we don't film on Sundays 
this is a sacred day. It's a day of rest. It's the day we go to church. It's the day we think about the start of the week and what can we do different and what can we change. It's the day we read through lessons and if we're going to be teaching in church. And so we don't, kind of the standard rule is keep the Sabbath day holy. And I don't think that's Mormon specific. I think a lot of religions have a day of rest like that. Okay, just parent moment. So it just means that like, one, we just, we try to like rest and not do like major activities and we don't like to go shopping. But if we run out of milk and we need to go get milk, we're, you know, it's, I don't have to go and talk to my bishop about it. Like it's not that big a deal. It's just the major concept of rest and being with family and we can go for walks and the kids can play at the park and they can see friends and they can ride bikes in the neighborhood. It's not, I think some culture has kind of stuck through and, and doesn't allow that kind of stuff in certain areas, but the more relaxed you are about it, the less tension there is within the family because our kids are like, why can't we go and play with our friends at the park? Well, if that makes us all happy, then let's go and play with the kids at the park. Do you know what I mean? Like, anyway. All right, so I think we need to keep getting ready for church here. I'm gonna get my shoes on. Um, oh, we have like 15 minutes. Pretty good. In general, at church, things have changed a little bit just because of the pandemic. Uh, we used to have three-hour church. Are you gonna get ready? Go get your dress on. It is? <laughs> Do you have it on underneath all that? Yeah. Okay, do you have tall socks or do you need me to get them? They wear this in the car and then change back into it on our way home from church. This is kind of a new thing. So we used to have three hour church. Chelsea, do you want gray socks? I thought she was right there. Nope, those are her gray ones. You can have white ones. So we used to have three hour church, but then the pandemic hit and we shrunk down to two hours and it's wonderful. What happened before pandemic? Right before? Was that right before? It, the, the, that was kind of blur. I can't remember when that started. So we, you know, we go to like the congregational part of church and have speakers get up and teach many little lessons and they're volunteers. They are us, like it's not just the leadership. After that is over, then we go to classes and the kids go to what is called primary and they learn about Christ and other things. And then Kaylee and Abby's age group, they go to a set for their age group, the girls. Jeff. Yeah, Chelsea doesn't go to primary anymore. She goes to what we call young women's. And it's just the older girls, Kaylee and Abby's age group. I forget that, I need to lump her into that older group. But every other week we have like a Sunday school where the combined um, older kids are with boys as well. And they, it's more of a, Anyway, it's a little bit different, but they combine with the boys youth and youth a youth program kind of a thing. So kind of church in a nutshell, believe in Christ, believe, I don't know. We don't want to really like dive into structural beliefs in, I don't know, maybe later, but like, no, we don't. <laughs> and we got to get ready to go to church. So that's kind of what the world sees and they see the restrictions and like, oh, I could never be a chart part of a church that puts those restrictions in place. It's like, well, you know, Jewish people do all the time. They have, you know, they have restrictions on food and they have restrictions on doing things on certain days. Like we have friends who are Jewish and they're like, I can't do anything today, it's Saturday. We're, you know, doing things for church. But that's not really any different than us on a Sunday. So as long as you respect these different religions for some of the, with the re restrictions that they have, we're not really that different. That's just my little two cents. We're gonna get ready to go to church. You need to, you have your socks on? Chelsea, do you need gray socks? So we do let the kids bring activities to church. Chelsea's got her little sketch pad here that she's gonna take. And then she probably has some colored pencils and stuff in here. Ashley, are you gonna take a little activity bag? Okay, here's Ashley's little bag. She's got some colored pencils and a little book to color on, right? Daddy packed you a granola bar, okay?
really quick just because we're, no one else is around here at church. I'm just leaving. Also very typical of something that happens on Sunday is that I'm the last to the car and everyone's in the car fully changed into their cozies because they bring them in the car with them and everyone's waiting for mom to come. But let's see. I think everyone is... Yeah. <laughs> I knew they would be in here like waiting for me to come. We were trying to scare you. Uh, yeah, it didn't scare me. I knew you were all in here. Hey, we just got home from church and made a good little ham and egg biscuit. There's some cheese on there as well. I'm gonna sit down and enjoy that. All right, so I've just been editing this video for you guys today and having a little snack after we had brunch, I guess you can call it. But uh, Sundays are always very quiet around here. Looks like Ashley's getting a bagel. Okay. You need to have some fruit with it. Can I get you an orange? Or some raspberries. You wanna put some raspberries on it? So it's very quiet on Sundays. Kay you took Kaylee to Jacob's, right? Yeah. So she goes to hang out with him him at her, at his house. And sometimes he ha comes to hang out here, but they have to just hang out, you know? They just stay at the home um, on Sundays, basically. Not too different than what they normally do. Oh, don't drop it. <laughs> but Sundays are very quiet. Maybe you go out to the park, Ash? Yeah. Yeah? Is Chelsea gonna go out with you? Probably not. Hmm, big raspberries. In terms of a religion or church or whatever, one, I don't need to feel obligated to, if we are talking about this, by no means are we trying to broadcast our church and force it on you guys. It's not a, a part of the reason why I don't really talk about it too much, but also it's a sensitive topic because it's something near and dear to our hearts. And I think as is typical with the internet, um, people will attack, you know, based on religion or race or, you know, whatever. And so I don't want that to be attacked for us. So I'm pretty sensitive about bringing it up for those reasons. If you guys have any questions about our church, you're more than welcome to leave them down below. I'm just getting a different sweatshirt. But if you hopefully found, found this interesting, our day today, I might end our video here just because it's mid-afternoon. We're not watching the Super Bowl today <laughs> and Jason and I have to run his car to get fixed. I don't remember how it was when he was in that car accident a long time ago. This is the first slot that they could get it open to fix his car with insurance paying for it. And so we have to drive his car <laughs> winded from walking up the stairs. Anyway, we have to go and take his car. It's not something we would normally do on a Sunday. We're literally just dropping the car off, putting the key in a drop box, and then coming back home. But um, we will have dinner tonight. I'm, I'm gonna get that pasta from my freezer. Is that, it was the pasta and the white sauce, and then we put a red sauce, meat sauce, on top of it with cheese and all that kind of stuff. I have that in my freezer, and I might just pull that out for dinner tonight and have that ready to go. It'll be an easier dinner for us to eat right after Jason and I get back home. It was interesting after I talked with you guys this morning before we went to church, a lot of the topic of our lesson today for the women called Relief Society, and it's the group of women who meet and have lessons and I don't know, just, you know, lessons about how to be better people, basically, be more Christ-like. Um, and a lot of the conversation today was about compassion, having compassion and empathy. And a lot of that was, that we discussed was this cultural difference within our church versus a doctrinal church base. And a lot of religions maybe do this, but a lot of our people in our religion get more focused on the cultural differences or cultural traditions versus the actual doctrine of the church. Like what we actually believe in, what the scriptures say, what Christ said, what we believe in about Christ. And those differences with the cultural side of it can make people walk away from the church. And I think that happens in a lot of religions where we let worldly things get in the way of our religious beliefs. And unfortunately that's people. And in terms of compassion, I don't care what religion you're talking about. If you are judging someone, there's no way you can have compassion for that person. You can't. And that was a major part of our conversation today was is that you, if you want to truly be compassionate towards someone, for people, for your family, for your friends, for your community, you can't judge them. You can't pass judgment for small things or big things. And I just really appreciated that lesson today and reminded me, I'm, I'm pretty judgmental. <laughs> I'm pretty vocal, I'm pretty big mouthed, I guess. And that's something that I have to work on. I do have a lot of compassion in my heart, but that conversation made me realize you can't have compassion and judgment at the same time. 
you just can't. Um, so hopefully I can be a better person and have some more compassion in my heart and um, be a better person to those around me and have more of a, an acceptance whether people have my own religion or not. I think that's one of the things that Jason and I are most grateful for when we decided to move up here to Seattle. That We moved away from Utah, which is where our church is based out of. It's where headquarters is, it's where, you know, whatever. It's where the saints settled. 150 plus years ago when they trekked across the United States and settled, the pioneers settled in Utah and that's where the core of our church is based. Leaving that left behind and opened our eyes to the cultural divide within the religion and let us dive into the doctrinal side of a religion. And that's really helped us individually and as a couple and as a family. And so I appreciate being able to like kind of take a step at my and look at myself. Am I being judgmental? Am I worrying about the cultural side of this church? Or am I reading my scriptures for what they truly are? So anyway, that's just kind of my thoughts on religion. And I think that they, it kind of crosses into so many other religions. And so it's just a matter of not judging someone else for their religion. And I have met so many of you here in the comment section and you guys are so good. You're like, I can tell that you have like this good heart and a lot of you are religious and you know, you say, God bless, you know, God bless your family. I know that you have that, that whole good wholesome heart. And that's what really matters. It's about how we treat people and how we act in life and how non-judgmental we are. And that makes you more of a, a better person than specifically what religion you are. So I hope that you take that from us and accept that from us because we accept that from you. We know that a lot of you, 99% of you are not the same religion as us. And that is 100% okay with us. And I, we hope that that's okay with you guys. I hope that we present ourselves as okay with being of a certain religion and still being acceptable to you guys. So I'm gonna wrap this up because we've got some other things to do, but I appreciate you guys watching this video and joining joining us on our Sunday, which is unusual, and we will see you guys next time. I have a fun idea of a date night to do with Jason. Maybe I can get it done tomorrow if he gets back from skiing, so stay tuned. And we have a video that we're gonna film right now about our business. If you're curious about what Jason does for our business, stay tuned for that one as well. So two videos to look forward to. Take care, have a good day.